Welcome to Intel Quarta Software Tickle Scripting Online Training. The purpose of this presentation is to introduce Tickle Scripting in the Intel Quartus Prime software. To get the most out of this presentation, you should have some knowledge of Tickle Scripting and some basic knowledge of the Intel Quartus Prime software and the FPGA design flow. Please consult our other online trainings in those areas if you're not familiar with those concepts yet. At the end of the presentation, you should be able to describe commonly used Quartus Prime software tickle packages, create tickle scripts to perform common tasks in the Quartus software, describe some useful commands, and be able to run your tickle scripts with the Intel Quartus Prime software. This is the agenda for today's presentation. First, I'll talk about tickle scripting support in the Intel Quartus Prime software. Then I'll go over four common uses for tickle scripting in the Intel Quartus Prime software. Creating projects, compiling them, accessing report data, and analyzing timing. Then we'll move on to miscellaneous useful Intel Quartus Prime software tickle scripting commands, followed by accessing command line options. And lastly, we'll talk about using tickle with the Intel Quartus Prime software. Let's start with general tickle scripting support in the Intel Quartus software. First, I'll talk about three main benefits of using scripting in the Intel Quartus Prime software. They are custom analysis, automation, and reproducibility. Custom analysis refers to extracting only the report information that you need. Intel Quartus Prime software tickle commands make it easy to extract only the information you need. Automation means you will be able to eliminate manual steps in the graphical user interface. For example, you can eliminate repetitive steps when making pin assignments. You can also interface the Intel Quartus Prime software with other EDA software in a complete end-to-end -end flow. Repeatability refers to easier project maintenance. You can put all the command to create and compile a project and extract report data in a single script. This makes it easier to document and run. This will complement your regression testing methodology. The Intel Quartus software provides extensive tickle scripting support. Support ranges from basic commands for making settings and assignments to advanced commands to access internal data structures. Almost everything you can do in the GUI you're also able to do through Tickle. Most command line executables in Intel Quartus Prime software include a complete Tickle interpreter and provide access to the Intel Quartus Prime software Tickle API. The Intel Quartus Prime software Tickle API includes hundreds of commands and over 20 packages. More detailed information about executables and packages will appear later in the presentation and in printed documentation on the Intel FPGA website. Tickle commands are grouped by function in Intel Quartus Prime software tickle packages. In each command line executable that includes a tickle interpreter, a subset of the available tickle packages are preloaded. This reduces the memory footprint, but it does mean you need to remember to load additional packages as necessary in your tickle script. It is important to know that not all packages are available in all command line executables. The packages available in each executable align with the executable's functionality. For example, the Timing Analysis Tickle Package SDA is only available in the Timing Analyzer command line executable Quartus underscore SDA. Here are some of the most commonly used packages in the Intel Quartus software. These are the ones I'll focus on in this presentation. A list of all the packages available in the Intel Quartus Prime software is available in the Tickle Scripting chapter of the Intel Quartus Prime Pro Edition Scripting User Guide and the QHelp Utility. I'll provide more information on these references later in the presentations. Use commands in the project package to create projects and make assignments and settings. Use commands in the flow package to compile projects and run other common flows. Run commands in the report packages to create reports and extract information from the reports. Use the SDA package to create timing information and run various timing reports in the timing analyzer. If you need to, you can use the Intel Quartus Prime software-specific load underscore package command to easily load packages. The syntax is load underscore package, followed by an optional version number, and then the package name. Using the Quartus scoping name is optional when you use the load underscore package command. Ultimately, you can use the tickle command package require to load any of the packages, but the Quartus load underscore package command makes it easy to load and unload different versions of the Intel Quartus Prime software packages. Now I'll introduce the first sample application of the Intel Quartus Prime software tickle API, which is creating projects. The Quartus project tickle package include commands for creating and working with projects and revisions, and for creating and working with assignments and settings. 
The commands listed here are a subset of commands available in the project package. There are a number of commands for working with projects and revisions, including project new, project open, and project close commands. Use create revision to create a new revision, which contains an alternate set of assignments for you to try on the current design. You use the set current revision to specify which of the multiple revisions in your project is going to be the current one. You can use assignment commands listed here to make both general assignments that applies to the entire project or design specific assignments that apply to specific design nodes or entities. As an example, the set location assignment can be used to make pin assignments. Here's an example of a tickle script that creates an Intel Pardis Prime software project and makes some assignments. This example uses the design files for the fur filter design that's included with the Intel Pardis Prime software. First, the project new command creates a new project named fur filter. Use the revision option to specify the revision name to be filtrif. The overwrite switch overwrites any existing project files of the same name if they exist. The following set global assignment statements follow the syntax set global assignment name, assignment name, value. We assign the family, device, the name of the PDF and Verilog source files, and the top level entity of the project with the global assignment commands. We also use the set global assignment command to point the project revision to an SDC file used to provide timing constraints to the project. Next, the script uses the set location assignment to assign the sigma name clock to pin AH. 10 a global clock pin on the Intel Stratix 10 device. Depending on device support, you can also assign signals to I.O. Bank's locations and edges of the device. Finally, the project close command commits all the assignments to the Intel Pardis Prime software settings file and closes the project. Now the project has been created and assignments have been made. At this point, you can open the project in the Intel Pardis Prime software and compile it. It's important to be aware of how the Intel Pardis Prime software processes assignments. When you make an assignment in Tickle or in the GUI, the assignment is not immediately saved to the Intel Pardis Prime software settings or QSF file. Because of this, it's possible for settings to get out of sync if you have the project open in multiple places or if you're editing the QSF in a text editor. Some actions, such as closing the project or running compiles, save any changed assignments to the QSF automatically you can also use the export assignments command to cause the Intel Pardis Prime software to write all assignments to the QSF at any time. Now let's look at a case where you need to use the export assignments command, and then I'll tell you how to change your script to avoid the need for the command. The export assignment command is typically used before running Pardis executables through system calls. This example opens the project, sets the family to Stratix 10, and synthesizes the design. The set global assignment command does not write the assignment to QSF file. So when we run Quartus syn through the system called qexit command, we are really opening the new instance of the project with the assignments in the QSF file without the new family assignment. Here, we must use the export assignments command to ensure that QSF has the new family assignment before calling the Quartus syn executable. On the other hand, if we use the execute module tool syn command instead of using the qexec system call, we won't need to export assignments because the execute module command will automatically commit settings to QSF. Now that we've talked about how to use Tickle to create projects and make assignments, let's talk about how to use Tickle to compile designs. The flow package includes commands to compile designs and run common flows. A flow runs a series of executables with various predefined options to perform common processing tasks. Compiling a design is a flow, as is performing I.O. assignment analysis. Most of the items listed in the processing menu of the Intel Pardis Prime Software GUI have corresponding flow or module names you will be able to run in Tickle. The execute flow command runs one of the predefined flows. The execute module command runs a module that is a command line executable. The flow package is not loaded by default in any command line executable, so you need to load it using the load package command before running any of the commands in the package. Here's a simple example of how to use the flow package. The command to perform compilation is very simple, execute flow compile. Intel FPGA recommends using execute flow command instead of separate calls to Quartus Sin, Quartus Fit, Quartus ASM, etc. This example first uses the load package command to load the flow package because this package is not loaded automatically. The project open command opens the project fur filter with the revision named filtref. Then the execute flow compile command compiles the project. Finally, the project close command closes the project. 
You could have easily add the execute flow compiled to the previous example, which would have created the project, made assignments, and compile it in one script. In your script, if you would like to compile or recompile your project from a clean start, you'll need to perform a project clean. Cleaning a project removes all Intel Pardis Prime software compiler-generated outputs for a specific revision or multiple revisions within a project. Binary database files, report files, and programming files will be removed, while source files and settings files are not. Let's look at three examples. In the first example, a simple project clean will clean all revisions in a project. The second example will clean revision foo, while the third example cleans all revisions that starts with foo. Now it's time for a pop quiz. Write a script that creates and compiles a project. You can do this using the scripts I've already covered as reference. Write a script to create the project and a script to compile the project. Pause this presentation while you work. When you are ready, resume the presentation and I'll go over the answer. Here's the answer to the pop quiz. This is a script that combines project creation with project compilation. First, the load package flow command loads the flow package that includes the execute flow command. The commands from project new to set location assignment are from the project creating script. They create the project and sets it up with assignments. Then the execute flow command compiles the design. The execute flow command automatically writes assignments to QS apps, so there's no need to export assignments. Lastly, the project close command closes the project after it's been compiled. After compiling the design, you'll want to get information from the compilation report. I'll talk about how to access report data next. The report package includes commands to access the Intel Cordis Prime report tables and data in those report tables and create custom reports. The report package is not loaded by default in most Intel Cordis Prime software executables, so don't forget to use the load package report command. The commands listed here are a subset of the commands in the report package. Some commonly used commands used for report management are load report, unload report, and create report panel. To gather information on the reports, use the get report panel names, get number of rows or columns commands. Most importantly to access report data, use the get report panel row and the get report panel data commands. I'll go over some of these in detail in the upcoming slides. First I'll talk about the Intel Partis Prime software report structure. Before using the report package in Tickle, it's important to know how compilation reports are set up in Quartus. This picture shows the compilation report window in the Intel Quartus Prime software GUI. A report is a hierarchical arrangement of folders containing report panels. The report hierarchy is shown on the left side of the window. At the top level, there are a number of report panels starting with flow summary. Then there are folder depending on which modules have been compiled so far. In this example, we've ran synthesis, fitter, assembler, and the timing analyzer so each module would have its own folder. Each of those folders contains a number of report panels. Here on the right hand side, we're showing the FMAC summary report in the slow model subfolder of the timing analyzer folder. Commands to access the report panel data requires you to specify the full report panel name. The full report panel name is the complete hierarchical path to the report panel, including the names of the folder it's in. Hierarchical paths use two vertical bar characters to indicate each level of folder hierarchy. For example, a panel inside a folder would be identified by the name of the folder, followed by two vertical bars, followed by the name of the panel. Nested folders are named with the same method with each level of folder, followed by two vertical bars. As an example, the highlighted panel in the hierarchy list, the FMAC summary report, has a full hierarchical name, timing analyzer, pipe pipe, slow 1000, 100 MB 85C model, pipe pipe, slow 1000, 100 MB 85C model FMAC summary. First level reports have no double pipes. These include panels such as flow summary. Here's a quick description of report panel structure. Report panels are tabular consists of rows and columns. You can refer to rows and columns in a report panel by their index or by their name. The index starts at zero and row zero has the column headings. In this screen capture shot, the row zero column headings are resource and usage. If your script loops through rows in a report panel, you can start on row one. There's a tickle command that returns the number of rows in the report and your loop continues while the index is less than the number of rows. Here's an example on how you can access data in a report panel. You can refer to rows and columns by name or by numerical index. This slide identifies column one which also has the name setting. It also identifies row one, which also has the name device. 
you can use the Get Report Panel Data command to get the value in a specific row by column cell. In the example here, I use the Get Report Panel Data dash name followed by the full hierarchical path of the Fitter Settings report, followed by the row and column numbers. This command should return the Intel Stratix 10 device that I am using. You can access by row and column indices as well. In the second example, I'm using Get Report Panel Row command to return the entire row of the report. I'm giving it the argument of row 1, which will return the entire row starting a device. I can also pass the name of the row, which is device. This will give me the same response as passing the value of 1 to row in the previous example. Now we'll look at a full example that uses the commands in the report package to print the worst case slacks in a design. We will look at the multi corner timing analysis summary report panel to accomplish this. In this panel, the worst case slack row will contain the numbers for worst case slack for setup hold, recover removal, and minimum pulse width analysis, and we'll just print these out to console. Here's the script that will accomplish this. The first three lines of this script loads the report package so we can use the report commands, opens the project, and loads the project report. Then we set the multi corner timing analysis summary report panel name to the variable panel name. We then find out the number of columns in this panel by using the get number of columns command. The for loop in this script then loops through all the columns starting at column one. In the body of the loop, the script gets the number for the worst case slack in nanoseconds and the corresponding type of slack. The puts command then prints out the worst case slack. Finally, the we unload the report and close the project after we're done. If we run the script, our output should look like the screen capture at the bottom of this slide. In this case, all of our slack is positive, so we are passing timing. It's time for another pop quiz. This time, write code based on the previous example of parsing through the multi-corner timing analysis summary to print a message stating if a design fails or passes timing. As a hint, think about what kind of slack a design would have if it is failing. Please pause this presentation now if you want to code up your own example. Resume this presentation and I'll go over a solution. Here's the code that would print whether a design passes timing or not. It's mostly the same as the example before. We are still loading the report package, opening the project, and loading the reports. With the first highlighted line of code, we create a new variable called failing and initialize it to false. We then loop through all the columns of the worst case slack row of the multi-corner timing analysis summary report as before, but this time we only get the slack number. With the second highlighted line of code, we check if the slack is less than zero. A negative slack indicates a failing design. If slack is less than zero, we set the variable failing to true and then promptly break out of the loop. Finally, in the third highlighted line of code, we check the variable failing to see whether the design passes or fails and then print out the corresponding message. We've looked at how to parse through and extract information from compilation reports. Now let's look at how to create timing reports and gather detailed timing information for specific paths using Tickle and the Timing Analyzer command line executable. The timing-related Tickle packages provide a way to constrain and perform detailed timing analysis on your design. All of these packages are available only with the Timing Analyzer Quartus STA executable. Timing Analyzer supports industry standard SDC timing constraints with the SDC package. The SDC extended package adds additional Intel FPGA extensions to the SDC standard to make constraining FPGA designs even easier. Finally, the SDA package includes commands to create timing netlists, read SDC files, and run detailed reports. It is highly recommend that you properly constrain your designs using SDC design constraints. Constraints consists of commands in the SDC and SDC extension packages that describe the behavior of the circuit. For example, how fast you plan to run the clock, how much external delay there are for each of the data pins, and so forth. You should place all of your constraints in the SDC file associated with the projects, so the Intel Quartus Prime software will be aware of them and will try to create a netlist that meets the constraints specified. When constraints are placed in the SDC file, Timing Analyzer can also read them with one command. If you're new to SBC and are not familiar with SDC syntax, I highly recommend using the Intel Quartus Prime Software Text Editor to create your SDC file. There you can use the Edit, Insert Constraint menu to graphically enter SDC constraints. The Intel Quartus Prime Software Text Editor also offers templates so you can insert a series of commands quickly. For more information on SDC constraints, Please consult the Timing Analyzer online training or the Timing Analyzer user guide. 
After you've created SDC files for your design, you'll need to create a timing netlist and annotate it with SDC commands that you've saved in the SDC file before running timing reports. To do this, you'll need to run three tickle commands from the SDA tickle package. The create timing netlist command creates a netlist of your design with the desired delays. You can specify to use either post synthesis netlist or a post fit netlist, depending on how far you were in the compilation cycle. You also have the option to specify the timing model to use and the speed grade of the device. Next, you'll run the read SDC command to read in the SDC file you've created. If you run this command with no file name argument, the command will read in all SDC files associated with your Intel Parvis Prime software project. Lastly, the update timing netlist command will annotate the timing netlist that you've created earlier with the SDC constraints read. This step will also generate a warning such as undefined clocks or combinatorial loops. After you've run these three commands, you're ready to run reports. Two commonly used commands to generate timing reports are create timing summary and report timing. The create timing summary command generates a summary report with the worst cast slack, an endpoint total negative slack for every clock domain in the design. You have the option of creating a report for setup, hold, recovery, or removal analysis. You can also choose to output the results to console standard out, which is the default or output to file or to a panel in the timing analyzer GUI. You can use this comment to quickly check if your design is passing timing. The report timing command is used to generate detailed reports on specific worst cast paths. You can also create reports for setup, hold recovery, or removal, but you have many more options to filtering your results by clock domain, by node name, etc. With the report timing command, you're able to see detailed path delay information for each node and interconnect that the specific path goes through. As an example here, the first create timing summary command will create a hold time summary report and write it to the file up.txt. In the second example, the report timing command creates a setup report with 100 worst case paths and will output the report to console standard out, which is the default. On the following slide, I'll go over a tickle script for the Quartus SDA, command line executable to generate detailed reports on the failing paths in your design. It will find the failing setup paths using the slow corner timing models and find the failing hold paths using the fast model since setup is more likely to fail with a slow model and hold is more likely to fail with the fast model. In the script, first we open the project, create a timing netlist, and then read in the SDC constraints associated with the project. The for each in collection command from the Quartus miscellaneous package loops through data collections similar to the way for each command works in Tickle. Here we get all the available operating conditions and assign them one at a time to the variable OP. We then set the operating condition to OP and update the timing netlist with that timing model. The if command then checks whether we're using the fast model. If so, we use the report timing command with the hold option to find failing paths. Failing paths are listed with the option less than slack zero, and the result of this report timing command is sent to top hold.txt. The else clause here is for the slow models. Here we will run report timing with the setup option. We have the same less than slack zero to find only failing paths, and append the results this time to top setup.txt file. If there are failing paths, then the detailed path information would be written out to the corresponding text files. Lastly, we use project close to close the project. If you run the script on the previous slide, if there are failing paths in your design, your output file will look something like this. Here you can see the report timing command return one failing setup path with a slack of negative 0.679 nanoseconds, and the path is between Y-Ray2 and YTDM multi entity. If you scroll down further, you will see detailed path information with delays for each interconnect and cell. Timing analysis, along with SDC and timing analyzer, is a large topic. To be able to fully utilize Tickle and the Tickle packages in Intel Partis Prime software to properly constrain your design, run detailed timing reports, and then close timing, please consult the resources here. You can watch one of our online training, such as the ones on timing analyzer, or constraining source synchronous interfaces. You may consult the timing analysis section of the Intel Quartus Prime Timing Analyzer User Guide or attend one of our three timing analysis full-day instructor-led trainings. It's time for a pop quiz on the timing report section. What is the difference between report timing and the create timing summary commands? Please pause this presentation now if you need to think about it. The two commands both return timing information pertaining to your design.
They have some similar options, such as the type of report to run and where to output the results. However, the report timing command returns information on the worst case paths along with associated slack and detailed delay information about the path. The create timing summary command will generate a summary report with worst case slack per clock domain. Now let's move on to miscellaneous Intel Cardis Prime Software Tickle commands that can help you write your script in various ways. The miscellaneous package can help you in various ways. This package is loaded by default in every Intel Cardis Prime Software command line executable. It has a number of useful command. We've already seen the load package command that loads different packages. In this section, we're going to talk about the escape brackets, post message, forage and collection, and get collection size commands. Many Intel Cardis Prime software tickle commands allow regular expressions and option arguments. However, the convention for bus naming in HEL is to use square brackets, which are special characters in tickle regular expressions. Intel Cardis Prime software tickle commands don't know whether you intend something with brackets to be a bus name or a regular expression. You have to make sure that you escape square brackets for bus names correctly. Improperly escaping bus names is a common error. For example, address backslash square bracket 10 backslash square bracket can be interpreted as a regular expression matching address 0 or address 1. If you intend for this to match bit 10 of the address bus, square brackets must be escaped twice. This uses three backslashes. The first backslash escapes the second, and third backslash escapes the square bracket. The miscellaneous package provides the escape brackets command for convenience. Use this command to do the correct amount of escaping to prevent the bit indication from being interpreted as a regular expression. For example, here's a way to get all the location assignments for the wires in the bus named address. Set the address names to the pattern you want to match. Notice in the first line here I'm not escaping the square bracket because the curly braces are used to group the string which prevents command substitution. Then you can use the get all instance assignments command to get all location assignment applied to the bus address. Using the escape brackets command provides the correct level of escaping in this example. The post message command prints out messages formatted like Intel Cardis Prime software messages. You can specify the message type and text. Supported message types include info, warning, critical warning, and error. In the screenshot, you can see the four messages I typed in the Intel Cordis Prime Software Tickle console window and the way each is formatted in the system message window. These messages, however, do not support right-click functions such as help and locate like regular Intel Cordis Prime Software messages. Some Intel Cordis Prime Software Tickle commands, such as commands to get all assignments in your design, can return multiple sets of data. The sets of data are returned as collections. A collection is an Intel Cordis Prime software specific container. You can use commands in the miscellaneous package to handle packages. You can iterate over elements in a collection with the for each in collection command. It has the same syntax as the for each tickle command. The get collection size command returns the number of elements in the collection. Here's an example that uses commands that manipulate collections to print details of all instance assignments in a project. The get all instance assignments command returns a collection of all the instance assignments in your project. First, we use the get collection size command to find how many elements are in the collection, and then prints it to standard out. We then use the for each in collection command to iterate over all instance assignments. Each individual assignment is returned as a list that includes the section ID, the source name, the destination name, the name of the assignment, the value of the assignment. The command in the loop body here prints out each of these values. Now I'll talk about ways to access command line options passed to Intel Cardis Prime Software Tickle scripts. The Intel Cardis Prime Software supports the global tickle variables argv, argc, and argv0. Command line arguments are also passed in using the Cardis args variable, so you have the option of using that as well if you wish. The table here shows the functionality of the global tickle variables along with the equivalent when using the Cordis args variable. argv is equivalent to Cordis args and contains the list of command line options. argc contains the number of arguments passed in and is equivalent to the length of the Cordis args array. Finally, argv0 is the name of the script run from command line or if no script is being run. For example, when interpreter is invoked in shell mode, then argv0 is the name of the executable you can also get this information by calling the info tickle command with either script or name of executable as the argument. As we've seen in the previous slide, we can use the argv variable to access command line arguments in a list. 
However, a smarter way of processing command line arguments is to use the command line package. Rather than writing your own or hard coding indices of the argv variable, Intel FPGA recommends using the command line package. This is part of the tickle lib distribution included with the Intel Quartus Prime software. With this option, you'll be able to pass in arguments in the format of option value. This allows you to pass in arguments in a flexible manner and makes your tickle script more robust. As an example, using Quartus SH executable, I'm going to pass the project name and an optional revision name into my tickle script using the project option, project name, revision option, revision name format, then in the script, I'm going to use the command line package to parse the arguments. The code here opens a project, and if you specify a revision, it sets that revision to be the current revision of the project. If you don't specify a revision, it just opens the project with the default revision. The first command in the script here loads the required command line package. Next, the set option statement describes the way the command line package specifies options that will be passed to the script. In this case, there are two options, project and revision. The .arg following project and revision specify that they each require an argument value associated with it. The empty double quotes indicates there are no default values. After the set options command, the array set ots hash command calls the get options command in the command line package to process any command line options, and it fills the ops hash array with the provided options. The if statement determines whether or not the caller specified a revision by determining if the revision is an empty string. With no revision specified, the project open command will only open the project with the project name. If the caller does specify a revision name, the script opens the project with the specified revision. In the final section of this presentation, I'll describe ways you can use Tickle and run Tickle scripts in the Intel Quartus Prime software. There are a number of ways that you can use Tickle in the Intel Quartus Prime software. The most common is using the command line executable to run a Tickle script file. You can also use command line executables to run an interactive Tickle shell. Additionally, you can do direct execution of Tickle commands with a command line executable option. I'll talk about these in later slides. In the Intel Quartus Prime software GUI, you can open the Tickle console by choosing Tickle console from the utility windows list in the view menu. You can then execute Tickle commands, source Tickle scripts in the Intel Quartus Prime software GUI Tickle console. Some tools in Quartus also support Tickle. For example, the Tiving Analyzer GUI includes an interactive Tickle console, and the system console used for in-system system debugging also uses Tickle. Here are details on the three ways you can use Tickle with Intel Quartus Prime software command line executables. You can run script files, open an interactive Tickle shell, or perform direct Tickle command evaluations. You do this with any of the Intel Quartus Prime software command line executables that include Tickle support. The partial list of those executables are on the next slide. You can substitute any of the other Intel Quartus Prime software command line executable name in place of Quartus SH in this example. To run a script file at the command prompt, specify the name of the executable followed by the dash T option, the name of the script and any arguments you may have. To start an interactive tickle shell, simply specify the dash S option with any of the executables. Use the exit command to exit from the interactive tickle shell. Finally, for direct tickle command evaluation, use the dash dash tickle evil option followed by the command to evaluate. As an example, the command I want to evaluate directly is help dash package flow. This is a partial list of command line executables that have tickle interpreters built into them. The Quartus SH executable supports general project management functionality. You can use it to make assignments, perform compilation, and general reporting and other shell functions. Other executables on this list perform specific functions. For example, Quartus underscore STA is used to generate timing report. The Quartus underscore CDB executable is used to perform back annotation, manipulate logic lock regions, and other compiler database related tasks. Quartus SYN, Quartus FIT, Quartus ASM corresponds to part of the regular Quartus compilation. Important to remember that different command line executables support different tickle packages. Tickle commands are grouped in packages by function, and appropriate packages related to each command line executable are available for use in that executable. As an example, the Quartus CDB executable manages the compiler database and is related to logic lock, back annotation, the chip planner, and version-compatible database files. It doesn't perform, for example, 
timing analysis functions, so tickle packages related to that are not available. To see a list of available and loaded packages for a specific executable, you can type help at the tickle prompt of that executable. You can also see that information in the Qt help utility. When running tickle scripts in Intel Cardus Prime software, it may be helpful to obtain information about the current executable running. The Quartus array is a predefined global tickle array that contains information about the current executable. You can access the content in the array with the Quartus array key syntax, just like any other tickle array. The table here lists some commonly accessed items. We've already seen in this presentation the use of the args element. You can also get the name of the executable, current project, or revision open, available packages for the executable, bin path, and many other aspects of the current executable. If you already have a project open and have made all the necessary settings, perhaps through the various GUI tools such as Pin Planner or Assignment Editor, you can automatically create a tickle script that would recreate the project for you from scratch, containing all the necessary settings. This is particularly useful if you want to hand off your project to another engineer or if you want to store the script in a repository. The Generate Tickle file for project option is located in the project menu of your Intel Quartus Prime software GUI. This is our final pop quiz. List three ways to use tickle commands and scripts with the Intel Quartus Prime software. Pause this presentation now if you need to think about it. Here are some of the possible answers. You could have listed any of these. First, you could use the tickle console in the Intel Quartus Prime software GUI. Next, you can run an interactive tickle shell with a command line executable. Third, you can perform batch mode execution of a tickle script with command line executables. Fourth, you can perform direct execution of tickle commands with the executables. Lastly, though not covered in this presentation, you can run tickle script using the tickle scripts, GUI from the Intel Quartus Prime Software Tools menu. The Intel Quartus Prime Software command and executables include built-in help. You can access these with the help command in an interactive shell or evaluate the help command directly with the tickle evil option. If you type the help command by itself, you will see a list of loaded and available packages. If you type help with the package name as an argument, you will see all the commands available in that package. Lastly, if you type help dash command followed by the name of the command, or if you execute a command with dash h argument, you will get help on that specific command. There are hundreds of commands in the Intel Quartus Prime Software Tickle API. The Q help utility is a great way of getting help on all of the command line executables and the tickle packages that each executable loads. When you run Quartus sh dash help, the key help utility opens in a graphical browser. There you'll find detailed information on all of the options available for any of the command line executables and the tickle packages that are supported in each executable. There are also examples you can base your scripts off of in the utility. With Platform Designer, there are some uses for tickle as well. If you're not familiar with Platform Designer, that is our front-end system integration tool used to quickly build a system with custom and off-the-shelf components. Platform Designer will automatically generate the HDL for the system along with the interconnect necessary to connect the components. All the Platform Designer compatible components have associated hardware.tickle files that tell Platform Designer about the properties of that component. Usually for a custom component, this tickle file is automatically generated by the component editor. However, if you want, you can further customize your component by hand editing the tickle file to include advanced capabilities such as HEL generation using instantiation parameters of the component. Please see our component interface tickle reference for more information. System Console is our low-level hardware debug tool used to interact with platform designer components through a USB, JTAG, or Ethernet connection. The entire tool is tickle-based so you can easily script communication with the components as well as to easily build custom GUI to display results. If you're interested in this, please see our System Console online training for more information. For additional references, you can refer to the Intel Quartus Prime Scripting User Guide chapter on Tickle Scripting available at www.intel.com. If you need training on the basics of Tickle language, Intel FPGA offers the introduction to Tickle Scripting free online training. And if you want to learn about advanced uses of command line executables including integrating Quartus executables with makefiles, check out the command line scripting online training. We've covered quite a bit in this presentation. Here's a summary of what we went through. We talked about using Intel Quartus Prime Software Tickle API to perform common tasks, including project creation, project compilation, accessing reports, 
and running timing analysis. We went through some particularly useful miscellaneous tickle commands supported by Cordis. We talked about accessing command line arguments, and finally, we talked about using tickle with the Intel Cordis Prime software executables. Intel provides multiple avenues in which to learn about Intel FPGA products. There is the Intel FPGA YouTube channel, which contains five minute quick videos, along with longer, more in depth training videos. There is the Intel FPGA training website, where you can access e learning courses made up of narrated slides, presented in an interactive player. Lastly, you can also enroll in a live, instructor led course presented virtually over the web. All instructor led courses have hands on lab exercises to practice the concepts you learn. If you need more assistance, Intel FPGA provides many self help resources for you to access. For example, there are web pages called landing pages dedicated to specific FPGA technology like memory or high speed interfaces. You can also view and post questions to the community forum, which is monitored by skilled Intel FPGA application engineers. The Intel FPGA training team is always looking to improve our material. To do this, a survey will be emailed to your registration email address. We welcome any feedback you may have. This concludes the training. Thank you and have a good day.